but um, oh, so you do have a budget. Yeah, because we have a guest speaker today. I said a budget. That's all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to have you all here. Um, and now, I believe Chase is going to help us with the ringing of the bell. And Mel will bring the light of Christ to the altar. Thanks, Mel. Well, again, we're just very happy to have everyone here, and we're especially happy to have with us today Michael Moser, who will be preaching for us for, the, for today and next Sunday. And I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about himself um, after I get through announcements here. A um, couple of announcements. Um, if you could please look at the shirt order form for Bethel um, in the narthex. Um, we would like to order shirts soon. 
Also, um, I don't know if you noticed on the, on the announcements on the screen, but the prayer time on Wednesday mornings has shifted from 7.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. And that's so that Pastor Jeannie can join in from Arizona and they're two hours ahead. So that's a little early. Um, and Chris would like it if the choir members could please meet at the piano just after the service to plan rehearsal times as we are hoping to start having some choir music during the service. And lastly, um, again, just a reminder of our mission of the month. This month it's for UMCOR, who does so much good work all over. And now with further ado, Michael, if you'd like to introduce yourself and we'll get started with the service. Well, let me just say I am delighted to be with you this morning. This setting takes me back to growing up in Ohio with my grandparents, uh, several of the grandparents at different churches in settings similar to this. And so it feels very, very comfortable. And you have been most gracious in your welcome. Uh, you have some background in uh, the bulletin. Uh, my wife Judy and I uh, live in Walworth. Uh, we attend First Church. Um, and I am, as I mentioned there, I am very interested in student, student affairs, chaplaincy kinds of issues within the context of United Methodist higher education. I work at North Central College, your United Methodist College. Uh, I'm an alum from there in 1970. I have worked there twice the first time for 26 years, and the second time I'm in my third. So uh, back home. And so both of those experiences, sorry, both of those experiences, sorry about that. I won't bother you with repeating. Um, <laughs> both this morning with you as well as work I feel privileged to be able to do at North Central. Uh, makes me feel very much at home. So I'm uh, delighted to spend the morning with you. You'll hear a little bit more about uh, me and my, uh, my perspective um, a little later in the service. Glad to be here. Please join me in our call to worship. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the works of God's hands. May our faces shine, reflecting God's love. May our actions preach the good news. Let our words and thoughts be pleasing to the Lord. Let us worship the Holy One, who is our strength and Savior. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn this morning is found on page 357 in your United Methodist Hymnal. Just as I am without one plea, verses one, two, and five. <clears throat>
please join me in our prayer of invitation. Gracious God, we come to this holy place in praise and worship. May we desire your truth more than gold. May we desire your word more than the sweetness of honey. Come, Holy One, O come. Pitch your tent and dwell among us. Amen. You may be seated. Our psalm is found on page 788 in the hymnal, 63, verses 1 through 8. O oh God, you are my God. I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, and in a dry and weary land where no water is. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is feasted with marrow and fat, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I think of you upon my bed and meditate in the, on you in the watches of the night. You have seen <clears throat> help. And in the shadow of your wings, I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. And our gospel lesson today is Luke 13, verses 1 through 9. It's found on the inside of your uh, inside scoop, if you'd like to follow along. <clears throat> At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did, or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for this fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil, he replied. Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. Here ends this lesson. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, be with us in these moments of worship, of proclamation and singing, moments of quiet and meditation. Speak your word clearly to us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Asking and answering the right questions. Researchers tell us that we and our brain encounter about 74 gigabytes of data per day. This is equivalent to watching 16 movies. Bad and good movies, 16 movies. <laughs> <clears throat> we try to make sense of it all, but of course we can't. And must divide the data into usable categories. Junk, I don't care kinds of things. I care, but don't have any control. 
daily maintenance of life data, the alarm went off. Do I want to get out of bed today? Is the question that comes with that. What shall I wear? What do I want to have for breakfast? And so forth. We process all of that data and the questions that come with them every day. The past two years have added to the list of daily maintenance questions that arise almost every hour. Do I wear my mask? Do I even want to leave the house? How many people will be out there? Are they vaccinated? And it goes on. And it's tiring answering all those kinds of questions. And then there are the usual ones. How are your brackets today? <laughs> Mine look like Swiss teas. <laughs> Are we there yet? What's for dinner? And I'm sure you may be thinking of some of the routine questions you ask of yourself every day. Each day we may also be asking some really big questions that neither easily asked or answered that are presented by the world in which we live outside of our immediate realm. What is truth? What is freedom? Who am I? And why am I here? How do we bring about a peaceful world? As United Methodist Persons of Faith, we also have additional data to take in. It is Lent, time for self-reflection and perhaps self-denial, and an assessment of where we are in our faith journey. In the past year, many things may have altered our perspective. Death of a friend or loved one financial or food insecurity, loss of a relationship, mental health, <clears throat> excuse me, challenges. To me, it seems that these past two years when we have all been dealing with COVID pandemic, social injustice, and have been wandering in the wilderness, have been almost two years of Lent. Of that kind of constant reflection that comes about because of what we observe and what we experience. I believe that the scripture today and the experience of our United Methodist heritage calls each of us to ask and answer out of that plethora of questions, both the right questions and to answer the right questions, providing a way to meaningfully determine what those questions are and where to find the strength to respond to them. Our scripture this morning offers some direction to that, as well as our own United Methodist heritage. And I'd like to spend some time looking at that with you this morning. The scripture this morning is really interesting. This story, particularly the first several verses here, only appear in Luke. 
The other thing is there is no reference anywhere else, nor is there any other kind of historical information we have about the, the situation regarding the blood of the Gentiles or the fall of the Tower of Siloam. So there must be another kind of reason that this story is shared with us and it prompted me to really arrive at our theme this morning. Because the people who are asking the questions are looking for the wrong answers. They really want to know whether those people who died did something wrong, that they were more sinners than anyone else, and that's why that happened to them. Whether it was the incident with the Gentiles, which is more reflective of the kind of brutality of uh, Herod's uh, reign, or the accident of the Tower of Siloam. And we want to find out, it's part of human curiosity to find out, well, what happened? Maybe if I stay away from that, that won't happen to me. Jesus, as he often does, answers a question with a question and puts it back and says, that wasn't what this was about. This is a call to some reality that death confronts us all. But there's the, there are really kind of two senses of definition here. One is death that we all will experience. And then there's ex eschatological death, life after death, that either we can participate or won't. And Jesus said, focus on the right question. And in our scripture, it tells us that Jesus calls them to repent, calls, tells them that twice. Because they wanted to see how they could escape, the people who were asking the question, not that question about repentance is where I am in terms of my own spiritual journey. So scripture gives us some, some help with this right answer, right question theme. But so does our United Methodist tradition. I remember Pastor Kim when she was at, uh, with us at Warm and was with you. Often she began a conversation with how is it with your soul? It's a question that John Wesley started all of his class meetings with. How is it with your soul? That has to do with a broad number of dimensions. It, it talks about your relationship with God. It asks questions about your relationship with others. It asks questions about how you are living out your faith, how you are nourished spiritually. Do you reaffirm others? Are you witness to the faith? No one can answer that question for you. Only you can answer it but I would suggest it is the right question. There's been a lot of soul searching in the last two years for us all as we've dealt with this pandemic. More reflection upon our lives and where we've been and what we're doing, at least it has been for me. Not relegated to Lent, but relevant to the question of what's it mean to be a Christian right now.
The parable in today's scripture also raises the question of, are you bearing fruit? It's not just enough, just enough to be planted. But there is an expectation that out of that experience of growth, there will be things that you do, the attitudes that you bring. In the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, are listed some of the fruits, fruit of the Spirit. These are love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let me read them again. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. From that inventory, if you will, are you bearing fruit? Can you find yourself in one of those or more? That's the question of the morning. Jesus, in that context, is also focusing on the importance of repentance. The worker whom the owner comes and says, well, let's cut this one down, says, no, let me put some more fertilizer on it. Let's see if we can make it happen. And then if it doesn't happen, we can take it down. Let me suggest to you that perhaps repentance, our acknowledgement of who we are, whose we are, and we are, where we are falling short is the fertilizer that enables us to grow more, to strengthen, strengthens us. But ultimately, as I alluded to earlier, it's an individual decision an individual answer that has to be offered. We each bring our own histories, experience, even our current circumstances to the resources of answering that question. So to answer that question, we need to take it seriously and realize no one provides the answer for us. Not a preacher, not a bishop, not a boss, not a spouse, not a political authority. We must answer the question. Our community of faith assists us in fellowship as we, we are with one another through proclamation, songs, prayers, and action, mission that goes on. Strength comes from that as we engage with those opportunities. But it comes down to us. The first hymn this morning, Just As I Am, Every time I think of that, I go back to my home church in my mind, Woodlawn EUB Church in Bucyrus, Ohio. Standing there as we would sing, particularly during Lenten season, but other times as well. standing beside my mother, my dad, 
And every time we sang that hymn, my mom had tears in her eyes. So, that was a good memory this morning. And that's the way that we as a community of faith, those kinds of experiences provide the strength for us to make the answer. There's a hymn that I also, another hymn that I associate with this. It's hymn number 530 in your hymnal. Would you, would you take your hymnal and take a look at that? It's a familiar one, I'm sure, at least. Uh, growing up, that was a regular part of my uh, discipline youth group. I was a youth, youth fellowship president. We always sang. Inevitably, this was one of those songs. Are, you, are ye able? Are ye able? And I want you to focus, if you will, on that final chorus. Because that, indeed, focuses the answer, the question and the answer. Can we, do you, proclaim, Lord, I am able. Our spirit, my spirit is yours. Remold me, make, remake me like the divine. Thy guiding radiance above us shall be a beacon to God, to love and loyalty. So, right questions, right answers. Are ye able? I believe we are. We can, if we choose to be. And we'll open ourselves to the power and strength of God through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come to a time of sharing joys and concerns. I have a couple of... Uh, cards that have been given to me and I will share those with you. Mel West uh, indicates a joy or a prayer answered. The sun is shining and it is spring. Also like to request a prayer for Nancy Wilson healing and strength. My cousin Bill Smith and family on the death of his wife Donna from COVID and the family that's that whose home was damaged in a fire last night northeast of Lauderdale Lake and the people of Ukraine. Carol Hansen offers this. Went in on March 15th for a biopsy in two areas of my lung. Did the CAT scan first to see if they were able to get it safely the new nodule is in a challenging spot and not able to get at it safely. The left side tiny nodule, this one also not safe to biopsy, is on the aortic artery and if nicked would cause a lot of bleeding. Next, next step, meet with doctor to determine what's next, if anything. Heavy concerns. We pray for strength. We pray for healing. Jeff Paddock would like to request prayer for Don Hummel. Fell and broke his hip. Successful replacement in rehab at Holton Manor. And Jeff and Bobby Paddock would like a request for prayer for travel safety for Sydney and Kristen traveling to New Orleans today. 
Are there any other joys and concerns that should be lifted up to us this morning? <clears throat> if not, I would invite us, I, I really believe and have found it to be a value to have some time for silent prayer. And so before our pastoral prayer, I want, I want to give us that time when we can commune openly with God, laying out our joys, our concerns, our needs for strength. And then I will conclude with the pastoral prayer. Let us be in a time of silent prayer. Almighty God, we come to you this morning with full hearts. Filled with joy and optimism. With the warmth of the sun entering into spring, a time of recreating and growth and new life. We indeed have hope, but we carry with us also deep concerns that we have named for ourselves, equal concern to those requests that have been laid before us this morning by members of this community of faith. We are often overwhelmed by all that comes our way, individually, as a member of this community and as a member of the community of the world. You called us to care for the world in all its dimensions. You have challenged us to be your voice and to bring about through your help the kingdom on earth. Provide us with the vision and with the strength and determination and persistence that can help that happen. Each day, in those with whom we meet, with those with whom we live, others who are distant but are on our hearts. We pray for leadership of government that is concerned with love and justice. Above all, we ask 
for forgiveness for our shortcomings and pray that we may indeed do better. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer which Christ taught when he said, <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Invite the tithes and offerings to be presented at this time. <coughs> Praise God from blessings flow. Praise Him, no creatures here below. Oh God, we return a portion of what is all rightfully yours. We pray that it may be used for the furthering of your kingdom in this community and in the world. Help us to be grateful for all that has been given. And may we also be about giving with each day that we live. In Jesus' name, <clears throat> amen. Closing hymn is number 2117 in the faith we sing.
now may the grace and love of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you, travel with you this day and forever. Amen. Blessed week, everyone.